Jenny, how are you feeling today? What are you up to at this very moment? You better reply to my messages as soon as possible. I know you have nothing else to do. I'm sure you're just lounging around on the couch, wasting your time. Teresa, hello, I'm doing all right. I hope everything is going well for you too. I apologize that I couldn't reach the phone faster. I was behind the wheel. I have to cook dinner when I arrive home, so I'm just running some errands and buying groceries. And what about your son? Is he accompanying you? Your parents were generous enough to volunteer to look after him. They're at the house right now. Will adores his grandparents, so it's beneficial for them to bond with each other. Oh, I see. Don't try and fool me with that lame excuse. You really don't care about their bonding, do you? You're just being selfish and lazy. I'm confused by what you mean. You're forcing my mom to take on responsibilities of your son, aren't you? Because you don't have the slightest interest in taking care of him yourself, right? I bet you just moved in with my parents because you anticipated that they'd offer to watch him and wanted to exploit their goodwill. That wasn't the motive behind our decision to move into your parents' house. But it's true that they've been incredibly helpful. It's thanks to them that I can pursue my part-time job without stressing about Will. I'm so thankful for their assistance. Good for you. You've only got one kid but you've got more help than you deserve. You could dump him with your husband's parents and do as you please. Normally, people only ask their grandparents for help when they're in a tight spot, considering their old age. But you think you can abuse them as much as you want to because you're so special. How conceited can you be? I don't know how you came up with that notion, but that's completely false. I'm not doing as I please, and I'm only depending on them because your brother has to go on lengthy business trips for his job. David's the one who initially proposed that we move in with your parents because he's gone so often. I'm handling as many of the household tasks as I can when I'm at home. And of course, I wish I could be at home all the time so I don't have to impose on them to watch Will. But I don't want to be totally dependent on them for money either. So I want to make some money so I can pay for some of the expenses myself. Oh, please. You're not as convincing a liar as you imagine you are. Jenny, I know that you don't genuinely believe any of that. You just want a part-time job so that my parents will be impressed by your work ethic. You just want to take advantage of them. I can't believe that you'd accuse me of just using them. I really am just doing what I think is best. I have three children, you know, and they crave to see their grandparents too. But because you're occupying my parents' space, I can't even drop by. Do you have any idea how long it's been since we last saw each other? My parents haven't even met my youngest. Do you understand? It's all your fault. You're obstructing my children's quality time with my parents. You're tearing apart our family because you can't bother to be taking care of one kid. I think it's remarkable that you're able to take care of three children. I don't know how you manage it without any help. You could come over whenever you want, but the reason why you can't stay every night is because your second son is allergic to your parents' dog, isn't he? That's not the issue. Were you even paying attention to me? Why do you always have to cut me off with the most irrelevant remarks? Anyway, back to the matter at hand. I'm gonna move in with my parents. I just want you to pack up your bags and leave right now. Excuse me? I'm sorry, this is also abrupt. I can't follow. What are you talking about? Why do I have to move out? What's so difficult to understand? I'm ordering you to leave. Is it so terrible for me to desire to live with my own parents? I'm not saying it's terrible. I just don't get it. You're saying that you want to move in with your parents and share the same roof with them? Of course that's what I mean. What else can move in imply? Are you a moron? Why do I have to clarify such a basic sentence? I'm moving in, got it? I'm sorry, I was just shocked. Do you mean that you'll be moving in with your clan? Your offspring too? What will you do about Ricky's dog allergy? That's right. Do you really think I'd abandon my children? You don't have to fret about that. I'll get my parents to get rid of the dog. It's as easy as that. My children are more precious. But your parents adore their dog. I think they'd be really heartbroken to say goodbye. Does your husband agree with all of this? Won't it be harder for him to commute to work if he lives further away from his office? My husband will be fine. It's none of your concern. And he won't be living with us. He'll be living on his own. Okay. Do you mean that he'll be traveling away on business like dad? Like I said, it has nothing to do with you. You really are intrusive. Why can't you zip it and accept what I've resolved? You're right. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have inquired. My curiosity got the best of me. But if you're going to move in, then... Have you already informed your parents? I haven't heard anything from them about any of this, so I was wondering if it might have escaped their attention to mention it. 
Or maybe you hadn't talked to them about it yet. I'll tell them when I feel like it. It's not like they need a heads up or anything. They're my parents, not yours. They'll be ecstatic to hear that I'm coming home. And I'm the eldest daughter. It's my duty to take care of my parents. They'll feel much more comfortable with me taking care of them than a total stranger. That way they can see their beloved grandchildren too. So I'm requesting you to leave. You're just an obstacle. I'm sorry, what? You haven't told them anything? I don't have to. All I have to do is make sure you and your stuff are out of my parents' place so that I can move in. We can't all live there together. It'll be too crowded. I'm their daughter and have three children, so I have priority. You may have married my brother, but that doesn't make you more significant than me. I move in and you and your son move out. It's as simple as that. Even if you say that it's not something that can be done immediately or even in a few days, if that's what you were scheming, then you should have mentioned something or given me a warning or at least asked for your family's opinion. Have you spoken to David? Of course I haven't. Don't you know where your own husband is? He's on the other side of the planet. How am I supposed to contact him without sacrificing sleep? Do you really think you want me to disturb him with something so trivial while he's working? And you call yourself a wife. Why can't you just comply with what I've instructed you to do? You could tell David when he comes home from his business trip. I understand that you don't want to trouble him, but if you haven't spoken to David or your own parents, how did you determine all of this? You can't just decide by yourself. That's way too egocentric. It was entirely my own decision. My mom and dad have absolutely no grounds to object to me. They adore me more than anyone else. Even though I'm a grown woman, I still have them completely under my control. If they find out that they'll have the opportunity to live with me and their adorable grandchildren, They'll be ecstatic. That's why I'm the only one who deserves to live with them, not you. Do you comprehend that? Or was that just too complicated for your feeble mind? That may be the case, but you can't seriously believe that. You can't just make such a drastic decision behind everyone's backs. You're probably oblivious to it, but you're creating a lot of problems for my mom by forcing her to look after your son. He just had his first birthday, right? Do you have any idea how difficult it is for someone my mom's age to have to deal with a kid that young? I can't just sit idly by and watch as you exploit my mom. You're right. I've put her through a lot of trouble. And I'm immensely thankful for all the time she spent with Will. His tantrums and hyperactivity must have been a nightmare for her while I was at work. But you can't make this decision without her consent. Besides, your youngest is barely six months old, isn't she? I think that would be more of a hassle. Oh, give me a break. You think you're so superior to me. You're nothing but a nobody. I actually stay at home and take care of my own kids, rather than go out and work and squander my time. I don't need to ask my mom to babysit. I take pride in raising my kids myself. Neither one of us is better than the other. I admire you for being a stay-at-home mom with three kids. I happen to go out to work a part-time job. But why does that mean that I'm wasting my time? We're each doing what we think is best for our own situations. Isn't that enough? Either way, I can't just pick up and leave so easily. Why not? Because where am I supposed to go? How am I supposed to move all of mine and David's stuff without any assistance from David? Maybe I could move out after David comes back, but I can't find a place at such short notice. And I can't agree to a decision you made without consulting any of us. You can leave David's things. He's family after all. We'll store his things safely until he comes back. You just have to take your stuff, your son, and get lost. You're being irrational. Why do I have to move out right now? Because I can't tolerate people like you who try to take advantage of my parents' kindness. Just because they offer to babysit doesn't mean you can use them like they're a daycare service. I never liked you even before you married David, but I thought I should respect his choice of partner. Now, I know I should have made more fuss against you when I had the chance, but that relaxed attitude of yours really infuriates me. I'm sorry. Our conversation was going nowhere, so I asked if anyone knew why you'd suddenly start behaving like this. And your husband told me what's happening. I heard that you're going to get divorced. That's why you're so eager to kick me out, isn't it? What? What are you talking about? Why would you talk to my husband behind my back? When I asked your mom, she told me that she hadn't heard anything about you planning to move in and confirmed that she hadn't agreed to anything like that. She didn't understand why you were being so hostile towards me. She hadn't seen you in person for a while and she was concerned about you. So she called your husband to inquire about you. He told her about the divorce and a lot of other things. My mom did? Seriously? She called my husband? 
What else did she hear? She discovered that your husband had moved in with his parents until the divorce is finalized. He told us that he had begged you to move out as soon as possible because he can't stand working from his parents' house and can't bear the sight of you anymore. That's why you suddenly came up with the idea that you wanted to move in with your parents, but didn't tell them anything because you wanted to dodge telling them why you're getting a divorce. Yeah, so what? It's personal. It's none of your concern. I don't have to justify myself to you. All you have to do is speed up and leave so I can move in. You want to move in because you have no other place to go. All that talk about not trusting me and not being able to forgive me for using your parents was all just a cover to hide your own blunders. You don't even know what state your parents are in. What? What are you talking about? What do you mean? My parents' state. They're just fine. Your dad isn't as fine as you think. I'm the one that's currently looking after him. Huh? Looking after him? Why are you acting like this is such a big deal? Of course you should be looking after him. Don't be lazy. It's a lot more grave than that. I mean that ever since he collapsed last year, he needed more assistance doing day-to-day -day tasks. It seems like you were just content that he was still alive. So you never came to see how he was doing. You don't know it, but he's been really weak. The main reason why Dave and I decided that we should move in with your parents was because it'd be too hard for your mom to take care of him by herself. And it would be easier on us if we were in the same house rather than going to visit several times a week. Uh, I didn't know that he needed care. What does he need? Help going to the bathroom? Why didn't you tell me this sooner? I would have told you, but you never asked. You didn't seem to care about your parents' needs since you always only contacted them when you needed something. And whenever your mom calls, you always let it go to voicemail. You may not know this, but she always is so disheartened that she can never even hear your voice. Sometimes I just can't get to the phone. What's so bad about that? Give me a break. Like when? Like when you're having an affair, for example? I can imagine that it would be really uncomfortable for you to answer the phone when you're busy with a guy that isn't your husband. What? I'm not having an affair. Did my husband say something that I was having an affair? Because he's lying. You cheated and got pregnant. And when Haley was born, your youngest daughter's dad is the man you're having an affair with. Of course not. But that's the reason why you're getting divorced, right? He already told us that he filed for a divorce because he didn't want to have to endure the whole separation period which means that your husband already has evidence, like a DNA test. There's no point trying to deny that you didn't do anything wrong. Your mom didn't know, of course, and was apologizing to your husband. She didn't think that you were selfish enough to ruin your own family. But that's exactly what you've done. Your husband was shocked that your parents didn't know anything too. Ugh, you're such a pain in the neck. But as you so eloquently pointed out, there's no use in acting like it never happened. If you're aware of the truth, could you please do me a favor and lend me some money? Excuse me? Where on earth did that just come from? You have a part-time job, don't you? So you must have some extra cash laying around. I desperately need to borrow some. I'm unable to pay off the damages to my husband by myself. Oh, and he asked for a fortune. Even though he's fully aware that I haven't been working since we tied the knot. Oh, and I decided to move into my parents' house at the end of the month. So... I'll give you until then to pack up your stuff and leave. I'd appreciate it if you had some money ready for me to borrow then. What in the world are you talking about? Do you honestly think I'll do anything for you? Now I understand why you're asking for all of this. Besides, your mom told me that she won't let you kick us out. Especially since I'm obviously more willing to be your dad's caregiver. Maybe you should just find a job and rent your own apartment instead of assuming that everyone around you will clean up after your mess. But I don't want to. Do you expect me to get a job in a supermarket or something? Ugh, that's so humiliating. And it'll be difficult to find an apartment that's suitable for kids. Your husband told me that he would take custody of the children. He's already taken the older two with him to his parents, hasn't he? He might as well just take Teresa too, since he's offering. He has the resources to raise them. You don't. You need to do something about that first. If I gave up all my children, I won't be able to demand that he pay child support. I can't do anything without that. He makes a lot of money, so I can demand as much as I want. Are you being serious? Is that the only reason why you want to take your kids back? Because you won't be able to receive child support without them? You want to use your children to get money? What kind of mother are you anyway? I've just spoken to David. He agrees with me that we shouldn't support you financially. 
you need to get a job and work it out for yourself. If you really love your children, you'd understand that that's what's best for them too. Now that you're divorced. Besides, we don't have any money to spare. We're saving so that we can get my license as a caregiver. That way I can get benefits for taking care of your dad and I won't have to go to work. I can support him full time. I imagine that's impossible for you. So give up on moving with your parents. Then what am I supposed to do? I won't have anywhere to go. Why don't you ask your lover? He has a family too. I can't ask them for money. Are you a moron? Clearly you're the moron since you've been asking me for money and more this entire conversation. Anyway, we're not going to support you at all. You've just got to sort things out yourself. If you really want to live with your parents and really do want to kick us out, you should consider that if you do that, you'll have to take care of your dad 24 seven. He needs a lot of care and you'll need a lot of resolve. Ugh, I can't do that. Your mom was doing her best all by herself until we moved in, but it was becoming a strain on her. And that's why I've taken over most of the responsibilities. It's easier on her to take care of a one-year-old that only weighs a few kilos rather than a grown man. So yeah, I don't think you can either. But you're the one that said the eldest daughter should take care of her own parents, remember? Then you should call a professional to do that. Then can you provide the money for that service? No, I can't, but... Then stop being so utterly irresponsible. Oh, fine. I won't attempt to kick you out. So just lend me some money. That's the only thing I ask. I'll pay you back, I promise. You can trust me. I need to pay my husband or he'll snatch all of my children from me. You understand, don't you? You're a mother too. How would you feel if you were on the verge of losing your children? I can't give them up. I don't understand at all. I don't understand the feelings of someone who puts their affair above their own children. Your husband told us that you abandoned your children while you went out to rendezvous with your lover. And you only want your children back because you want child support. So you don't have to work. I don't want to understand how your brain functions at all. If you won't take care of your dad or even try and you don't have the money to pay for a professional, then you should try taking care of yourself first and get a job. Maybe if you show that you're willing to pay, your husband will let you pay in installments. Instead, you'll learn more about being a respectable human being if you learn that there are repercussions to your actions. What do I do about my children? What about the child support? You're still harping on about the child support? If that's the only thing you can think of, then you've got a long way to go. And I suggest that if you care at all for your children, you'll let your husband take custody. They deserve that much at least. If someone as irresponsible as you raises them, I dread to imagine what kind of people they'll grow into. Anyway, do your best. Good luck with your job search. I hope you're happy. Teresa eventually gave up on trying to push Jenny out of her parents' house, but she still hadn't learned her lesson and phoned her mother to try and persuade her to help her. Naturally, her mother had no interest in listening to her excuses and only repeated what Jenny had been texting her all this time. Teresa was informed that she couldn't rely on her parents to rescue her because she was a grown woman and needed to sort out her own mess. Her mother even went as far as to tell her to never set foot in her home again. It seems like Teresa's own parents had grown tired of her exploiting their love for her and cautioned her to never anticipate them to lend her money or do favors for her ever again. In the end, her two older children were taken by her husband and she had no grounds to demand that he pay child support since her youngest daughter wasn't actually his. Her lover wouldn't admit that Haley was his daughter either because he had a family, so nobody was obligated to pay child support. Haley was stuck with Teresa as her mother, so Jenny resolved that she would occasionally visit them to see if Teresa was actually working and doing her utmost to raise her daughter. Teresa seems to have finally come to terms with her fate and is working day and night to pay her husband his settlement and to raise Haley.